The Weekend in Jacksonville with Dan Hicken is presented by Millennium Physician Group, your connection to a healthier life. Jacksonville, it's your media mogul friend, Dan Hicken, ready to give you a rundown of all things Jacksonville sports coming up this weekend. Let's start, as always, with our let's go, JJ's, let's go. The Jacksonville Jaguars, I really don't even want to talk about the games. I mean, they lost to Houston and the Jets back-to-back. Uh, they're not going to beat New England or Indy. They're going to have the number one draft pick. They're going to be 2-15. and 15. They're 16.5-point underdogs against the Patriots, and that was before the COVID list came out. So the COVID list comes out. There's already Jaguars already out without three or four starters. Now, they may or may not come back. We know Josh Allen's out this week. We know Andrew Norwell's out this week because of COVID protocols. The rest of them may be able to come back, may not be able to come back. It doesn't matter. They're not going to beat the Patriots. What's amazing, when your team is this bad and is limping towards the finish line and just trying to get there, you don't really even talk about the game. You spend a day on the game and you move on. And the news now that's breaking this week is that ShotCon is actually going to retain Trent Falke. Now, again, the Jaguars haven't made anything official as of this taping, but if Trent Falke is going to stay as the Jaguars general manager, the Jaguar fans are not going to be happy about it. Trent Falke does not have a great track record. Trent Falke did not do a good job in San Francisco. Trent Falke has been with this organization for two years. He's a bridge to the past. Quite frankly, ShotCon needs a fresh start, and a fresh start would include not keeping Trent Falke around, but uh, Chad's the owner, and I honestly believe this, guys, and I know you'll go nuts when I say this, but I really believe Shad Khan wants to win. I do. But some of the decisions that he continuously makes regarding football leave us scratching our heads. That's what we're doing. We're scratching our heads over Trent Balfi. So we'll see again. Nothing official yet, but it looks like, according to you know plenty of the national guys, Balfi will stay and will lead the search for the new coach. All right, let's talk about something, well, also not pleasant. The Gators. Well, their performance in the bowl game. Look, when you're a Florida fan, if you'd won, you'd be happy. You'd talk about it a little bit. You lose, you're like, who cares? That's just the truth. But, the, you know, you do care because we watched the game. And Emory Jones' swan song was not good. It was not good. He was not good. He will hit the transfer portal. His audition, though, was not pretty. And I wonder where he ends up. I'll be very curious to see what college he decides on. Uh, we now move ahead to the Billy Napier era, but I'm going to tell you guys this. Gator Nation, you are going to have to practice some patience here with Billy Napier. I mean, Dan Mullen had good players when he got here, and he made the program worse by not recruiting well. And the only reason why he had top 10 classes, like 10, 11, 12, is because he would add on guys at the end that they knew may or may not make it, but they helped his ranking. It's kind of a facade in a way. And then they'd hit the transfer portal. You're the University of Florida. You shouldn't have to hit the transfer portal. You really shouldn't. You could supplement a guy or two here like Alabama does. But my goodness gracious. But I think Billy Napier gets it. Billy Napier understands. And Billy Napier is going to sign guys. But the reason why I say you have to be patient, Florida fans, is because you open with Utah next year. They're the Pac-12 champions. They got 15 guys back, including their quarterback. It doesn't get much easier the rest of the way. So, to me... Seven and five? Hope I'm wrong. Six and six? Eight and four? I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, FSU's playing the portal hard, but they need to. They have to. They aren't recruiting well either. It, much to be determined about Mike Norvell, but at least he's bringing in guys who can help the program right away. Got a couple of receivers, and they need a receiver. They got Micah Pittman from Oregon, and then they got a six, seven guy from Arizona State who was high school teammates. Of uh, Micah Pittman. I wonder what kind of high school team they had. They must have been unstoppable if they had anybody could throw the football. But this guy's a big kid from Arizona State. He's six foot seven. His name is Johnny Wilson. So we have that going for us. High school basketball in full swing. Uh, great game coming up next Monday. Uh, Providence and Orange Park. Providence, real good. I've lost a few games, but they play a great schedule. Orange Park undefeated. Uh, that's at Providence over there, right off of Hodges Boulevard. Seven o'clock should be a lot of fun. So uh, listen, lots of sports going on, lots of opinion time, time to rebuild, time to relax, time to rejuvenate. And we appreciate you hanging out. We'll see you next time on Jacksonville's Weekend in Sports.